Hi, welcome to another Mac 7 tutorial. This is number 23, making reusable patchers. And we're doing some other stuff too. What the heck are we doing here? So we had made our beautiful keyboard and now we, uh, we had made this keyboard so we could keep using it over and over again. Um, and we have it up here as a B patcher. Well, you know, we were just making this electronic synthesizer in case nobody was paying attention. And we'll just turn the, uh, turn the sound on there and uh, maybe play something a little bit. Oh, oh, that's volumes at zero. Always a problem. There we go. And it's great because they're sine waves. They're so perfect that they really interfere with each other. Nice. Um, but what I realized was, you know, um, this is a perfect scenario where now I want to add an effect and I will have to change six patchers here and I don't want to because I'm truthfully quite lazy. So with your patcher locked, let's do a real quick experiment here. We're just going to click open Johnny cycle here and instead of, um, I like to be safe on this. I don't want to save my entire project as Johnny Cycle. So I'm going to make a new window. If you go into your patcher window toolbar down here, there's a little like window over a window. I'm going to click another one open, get a new view of this, and I'm going to save this like I saved the keyboard patcher before. File, save as and I'm going to put it in here as Johnny Cycle. All right. Well, guess what? Now we're just going to put these away. And I'm going to come back here and let's unlock this patcher. And we're going to click in the name here. And whereas right now it says P, which is a sub patcher, Johnny Cycle, I'm just going to start typing Johnny Cycle. And there it is. Now let's look at the difference here. Suddenly we have well, suddenly we have Johnny Cycle here without the P, and the reason is because it's now saved as a file, and you can open your file as a patcher inside here. Now this does mean that if you are trying to hand in your homework, for example, you're going to need something that says you're going to need to send me a couple files. You're going to need the main patcher, whatever it is you're working in, my big machine, Ted's big machine, and then you're going to have to send me Ted cycle and Ted keyboard. You'll have to send me all three patchers, or you can possibly um, embed this somehow or other in them. No, you'll just have to send them all. We'll get back to that later. Anyway, now the other thing is that if all of these were to say suddenly, and look, you can just delete the P and they all turn into Johnny cycle. Now, why would I bother doing this? Um, the reason's actually quite simple. I only want to change one of these. As they sit right now, I'd have to open each one of them and there we go. They're, they're making a thumping sound as they reconnect to the, to the uh, amplifier for the output. Um, but now, if I open the original, and I'm going to show you how to do that, let's lock our patcher here and double click on Johnny Cycle. Okay, now, this is the Johnny Cycle patcher, and I'm going to make it a little bigger and zoom in so you can see everything. But you'll notice that down here in the corner now, there is not a lock or unlock. There's a thing that's, it's an exclamation point. It's saying danger. You're about to modify a read-only file, but you're allowed to do it. You just should recognize that that's what you're doing, and it will change every single Johnny Cycle patcher. So if you have another project that uses Johnny Cycle, it's going to get changed. I'm just going to click on it, and then it's locked, and I'm going to click on it, and it's open. So here's Johnny Cycle with its, um, let me zoom a little bit here. Whoop, whoop. Johnny Cycle, Johnny Cycle, where are you? Come on, come on. There we go. Whoops, whoops, whoops. There it is. Okay. So 
what do I want to do to Johnny Cycle today is I want to add the ability to bend a note. Um, and when I fix this and save it, every other Johnny Cycle will become just like it. Cool, huh? So that way I won't have to um, I won't have to go and change every one. It seems like I'm going through a lot of work to save a little bit of work, but it's actually the other way around. I'm going through a little bit of work to save myself doing a lot of work. So we're going to learn some new objects today as well. If uh, I can't remember if you learned these before, but the first thing I'm going to do is just receive pitch bend because we already embedded this inside, um, kind of in our patcher, and I don't want to mess around with uh, having to to send more patch cords around. So I'm going to type N and type the letter R, which is for receive. You can also type receive if you want to, but I just prefer R. And I'm going to say pitch bend and J. Um, you can make it pitch bend your name, but I but um, it is funny because these sort of things end up getting crosstalk too. If everybody calls their receive object pitch bend, then we end up in trouble. But here it is, receive pitch bend. So I'm going to have to make pitch bend J, I made it. You make it pitch bend, I know there's a Ted out there, uh, pitch bend T or whatever. Okay, so it's going to receive the pitch bend and it's going to come in. I'm just going to put a number here so that we can see it when it comes in. And if you recall, let's go scrolling around and find our keyboard here and unlock it. So pitch bend was over here and I'm going to put a number here too just so we can look at it. There's a number and as you can see it is 64 and do you remember how our pitch bend worked? We like pull it down and it goes back automatically to <laughs> supposedly 64 and back to 64. Great! And then what we're gonna do is send it somewhere. We're gonna type N S inside that box for send. You can also type send if you can't remember to just type S. Send, what was it? Pitch bend J. And we're going to send that number to everywhere that there's a pitch bend J. And just to make sure that we've got it, I'm going to double click, I, I just locked my patcher, double click on it, and it will show you that there is a send for pitch bend J and there's a receive for pitch bend J and where it is. So I'm going to, going to click on it and it's going to go right to it. So there it is. And look at that, it already received the 64. Fantastic. So knowing that the middle of the road is 64 here um, and that I have a frequency here, I think that what I can do is just get rid of the 64 by subtracting it. So I'm going to uh, new um, minus 64 and then it'll be outputting a 0 and then whatever that output is this number is going to I see a trick coming already. So, so let's clean up a little bit here. Yep. Gotta pack this stuff up and out of the way. This is what happens when you're too zoomed in. That's all good. Line good. Okay, so right here we know that it's going to be putting out... Oops, I don't want to do that. I want to do... I want to do it between here. There we go. Whatever this number is, we're going to add the difference here to it. So what we need is this plus or plus this number and it's going to equal that other number, but it's not going to be that simple and I will tell you why. Because if we type the letter N and we say plus space 0 point zero, just in, I don't think there's going to, just plus zero, plus zero is good enough. Um, there won't actually be any decimals. Um, 
we're going to use the 64 to go in this side, but that won't trigger it. So what we need is something that will make this thing fire every time. And that object is called Bondo. B-O-N-D-O. -O. Uh, space, two. So we want two things going into Bondo, two things coming out of Bondo. I'll explain momentarily. So this number, 261.6, is going to come in here. And whatever the result of this is, I'll just make another number box. Whatever the result of this number is, is going to come in here. But, if you put, if we would have just put it in here, in the, in the plus zero thing, it would change the number, but it wouldn't output a number. So when we slide up and down, it wouldn't do anything. But what Bondo does, it's sort of like the POC object, the P-A-P-A-K, POC object, is that whenever it gets anything in either inlet, it fires and it goes boom, boom, always right to left, boom, boom. So it'll put the number in, whatever this number is going to be, and it will send a number out. And we'll put it right back where it was over here. And that is how our pitch bend is going to work. Isn't that exciting? So let's check and see that it does work, um, which we can do, humorously enough, by going by uh, locking our patcher, double-clicking this, going to the send object. There it is. And it, it highlights it so you can find it. And let's see if our pitch bend is working now. Nice, nice. Nice. So our pitch bend is working. And now let's just check something else. Let's open another Johnny cycle. And we see that this one has not updated. I wonder why. Well, I'll tell you why. Let's go back to um, our real Johnny cycle. Johnny cycle hasn't been saved yet. So now that we know that it's working, let's save it. And uh, you have just heard all those amplifiers rumble, so you probably know what happened. All of them disconnected and reconnected. But now, if we open this Johnny cycle, look at that. It's got the same thing going on. What about this one? It's got the new receive object on. And so that's kind of cool. So this thing's broadcasting like an antenna. And all of these Johnny cycles are picking up that new change. So now when we play like two notes, nice. So besides learning how to do this awesome pitch bend, which sounds totally radical, we've also learned how to sort of conserve our effort and how to make patchers that will update themselves. And that's important, especially if you're doing something like making a 24 node um, synthesizer. We've just got six. Well, five actually, if you count the keyboard it's limitations. I never did fix that. But um, so there you go. Uh, patcher within a patcher. This is how to um, use a regular patcher as a sub patcher in Max and how to make a really cool pitch bend using Bondo with your super awesome keyboard. So that's um, that's it for today, and uh, not for today, for now, because I'm going to come right back and do another tutorial, but I hope you enjoyed that, and I will patch with you soon. Take it easy.